Hi, I'm Glenn with Zeppelin Design Labs in Chicago, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Altura Theremin MIDI controller to control any of your synthesizers or other MIDI devices. I'll show you the tips and tricks and techniques that you need to get the most out of your MIDI controller. Okay, now I'm assuming that you've read the Altura Quick Start Guide and the accompanying video, both of which can be found on our website, zeppelindesignlabs.com. These documents will show you all the basic features of the Altura and how they work, I am going to concentrate on how to use them to best effect. To get set up, all you need is a power supply, a standard MIDI cable, and a synthesizer or some other MIDI device. For power, use a 9 volt battery or use a wall wart that's center negative and rated for at least 100 milliamps current. Plug a standard 5 pin MIDI cable into the MIDI out jack on the Altura. Plug the other end of the MIDI cable into the MIDI in jack. To plug directly into your computer, you're going to need a MIDI to USB converter like this one. Some of these are really cheap, and they generally don't work, so make sure you get yours from a reputable outlet who's going to take care of you if you have any trouble with this device. All right, let's play. Turn everything on, and then wave your hand in the air, and you should hear something. If you don't hear anything, the problem is probably that you've got a mismatch between the Altura's transmit channel and your synthesizer's receive channel. This device is set to receive on channel 2, so I'll check to make sure the Altura is set to transmit on channel 2. To do this, change the function to function number 7, which is channel transmit set, and then use the data far knob to change to the appropriate channel. And presto! Okay, now I want you to turn the Altura off again, then turn all the knobs to the far left and turn it back on. The knobs in this position form an Easter egg that will reveal the software version loaded on the Altura. This three-digit number is the version number. If you display something lower than 212, stop right now, go to our website, and learn how to download the latest version of the software. Or go to our GitHub page at github.com slash zeppelindesignlabs. If you're familiar with Arduino products, or you have a friend who is, this whole process takes about two minutes and is very simple. This next number that appears, we call the articulation. It's a multiple of 15. It represents a time delay between pulses transmitted by the right-hand sensor. This goes way far towards stabilizing the performance of the Altura. If you want, you can adjust this number and experiment with different values by removing the lid and adjusting this tiny little pot right here with a small screwdriver. Turn the driver to the left for higher numbers and to the right for smaller numbers. At higher values, there's an audible gap between notes and your plane becomes less articulate. If you move your hand too fast, the Altura will skip notes that you intend to play. At much lower values, the Altura becomes much more responsive, but also becomes a little more unstable. And sometimes when you want to play a specific note, it will trigger notes that you do not intend to play. The factory preset of 45 balances these two. Me personally, I prefer a slightly more responsive unit, and I like to play with the Altura set at 30. Now it's important that you understand the concept of what we call the note bin. That's the area in space that goes with each particular note. Now the Altura is active over a fixed range of space, from down here by the sensor up to, well, right about there. It's about two feet or 60 centimeters. The number of notes that you fit into that space will influence how large the bin is. You can put a single octave of pentatonic scale, which is only six notes over two feet, is about four inches of airspace per note. Or you can fit a full eight octaves into the same space and divide it up into 98 notes. So the more notes that you fit into your scale, the harder it is to find any one particular note. Now, if you're just playing sweeps or effects, maybe that's fine to have a full eight octaves and 98 notes there. But if you're trying to play a specific melody, you're going to need to limit the number of notes within the scale. Uh, we recommend for starters that you, you deal with no more than one octave of a chromatic or harmonic scale, or up to two octaves of a pentatonic scale. Find a posture that's comfortable for you. I like to play with the Altura right between my waist and my navel. Now the Altura's sensors are sonar devices. One of these is a little speaker transmitting a chirp, and the other is a microphone listening for an echo. So you'll get the best results from your Altura when you hold your hand flat and straight 
and move your arm directly along the axis of the, along which the sensor is looking. Also, it's important to hold your wrist back a little like this because as a sonar, the device is looking for the closest object. If that closest object is your forearm, you can wind up transmitting the wrong note. But because holding your wrist this way is a little uncomfortable, try to form the practice of relaxing your wrist between phrases as you're practicing. Now, the Altura does best at detecting the presence of smooth, flat surfaces, which is why sometimes I like to play with a book or a clipboard or a paper plate. Imagine the performance possibilities. Now, be careful how you set up your environment. If anything gets into that zone, it's going to trigger an unintended MIDI event. The neck of a guitar, another piece of gear in your rack, a loose piece of clothing or a stray cable or something. So keep that zone clear. Whichever scale you choose to play with, you'll need to learn where in space each note is located, just like you would on any fretless instrument. Play the top three notes in the scale, down and back up again, over and over. As you move from note to note, the bin expands around your hand, which greatly enhances your ability to hold that note steady. But this also means that the border between notes shifts a little bit in space as you approach the note from one side or the other. The center of the bin stays in the same place in space regardless. It is possible to play individual notes, but it can be tricky. This is because the sonar signals emanate from the Altura in the form of a sphere. If you insert your hand straight into the sensor beam from the side across its axis, you may cross the bin of the next note further out on the scale, triggering it unintentionally. Try instead to enter the beam by moving your hand along a curved path. Let's look at each of the Altura's functions and examples of when you might use each to best effect. Function 1, pitch bend, is most useful when you're playing leads for dramatic effect at the top and the bottom of a lead run. When your Altura is paired with a Macchiato mini synth, the data far knob controls how many semitones the pitch will bend, up to a full octave. If you're using a different synthesizer, that parameter is usually buried a little deeper and you'll have to find out where it is consulting the owner's manual of your synth. The data near knob adjusts a, a neutral zone in space between the regions where the pitch will bend up and down. This makes it a lot easier to find the flat space where the pitch is not to be bent, so that you can start from the true pitch and then bend up and down from there. At a value of 127, the space is quite large, and the pitch only bends near the top and bottom of the range. Most synthesizers map the modulation wheel to perform all kinds of different effects, often vibrato or tremolo, but also filter sweeps or uh, timbre changes. Explore the various patches on your synthesizers to find which patches not only sound good when you use modulation, but also look interesting to play on the Altura. Function 3 is note velocity. Now most synthesizers map note velocity to volume. Each individual note as it's produced is produced at that current note velocity. So you change the volume from one note to the next, but not during the play of any individual note. This is most effective when you're playing voices like piano. Play around with the limits of the values that you transmit using the data near and far knobs to get the most expressive results. Function 4 is the channel volume, and it functions a lot like a master volume control on your synthesizer. It's most effective for producing swells in instruments like strings and synth pads. Channel volume, in contrast to the note velocity, affects the volume of the note as it sustains. Function 5 turns on portamento, the smooth glide from one note to the next. The left sensor then sets the portamento time, or how long your synth takes to get from one note to the next. Time equals zero switches the effect off. 
time 127 takes about a second and a half to glide from one note to the next. The portamento time has a strong effect on the overall feel of your performance. Experiment with a wide range of values until you like the result. Many synthesizers do not implement portamento at all. Some of them only implement it on a few patches, or some of them are pretty easy to find and switch on, and some are pretty tricky. So depending on your synthesizer, this function may not work at all, it may work with difficulty, or it may work easy as pie. We wrote the function to work perfectly with the Macchiato Mini Synth by Zeppelin Design Labs, on which it works effortlessly. Function 6 is XY mode, in which the right hand sensor emulates the left hand sensor. They both transmit control change data, and neither one of them is transmitting note data. So you need a drone synth or an arpeggiator to produce some sound for you to work with. But the two sensors now transmit control change data for any control change number that you choose. This gives you access to a huge range of effects and ex expressivity in your music. Every synthesizer should come with a MIDI implementation chart. So on this Korg Minilog, for example, we discover this chart at the very back of the manual. From this chart, we can discover that the LFO is controlled by CC numbers 24, 26, and 27, for instance. We'll use some of this information to good effect, and it sure beats random trial and error. The Altura does permit you to use its functions in combination. For example, you can set up a nice portamento and then add modulation on top of it. Or set up modulation and then go back to channel volume for more expression. Okay, well those are my basic tips and tricks for getting started with the Altura Theremin MIDI controller. If you found this uh, video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and please post your questions and comments in the section below. So from Zeppelin Design Labs in Chicago, this is Glenn waving goodbye. <laughs>